everybody, welcome to Scuba Diving Magazine. If you're watching this video, then it's probably the night before your qualifying open water dives and you're a little bit nervous because you want to do your best. The first thing is, is that this nervous feeling is perfectly normal and everything is gonna go well. Take it nice and easy, enjoy yourself and keep your eyes and ears open and do your best not to do any of these. The first thing to avoid is panicking. Now, I know it's easy for somebody else to tell you not to panic, but it's very important for you to keep your head on your shoulders in and out of the water. If you're worried about anything, let your instructor know and talk it through with them. Don't ever hold something in. Every dive should be carefully planned out to go as smoothly as possible. And all you need to do is to trust your equipment, trust your instructor, and of course your own training. Everything is gonna be fine. Just practice your wusa and just talk to your instructor if you're ever nervous about anything. If you don't listen, each open water dive is carefully choreographed. I mean, we actually have slates that tell us which order to do stuff on every single dive. Your instructor is gonna give you several briefings before you even touch the water. So listen and try to take it all in. Don't just phase out. Before each dive, they're gonna run through where you're gonna enter, where you're gonna go in the water, and then what you're gonna do when you're there and in what order, and any relevant hand signals for any specific skills on that particular dive. So listen to it all, take it all in so that you're never confused during the dive. If you don't pay your bills, um, it's actually one of the written reasons that we can withhold a certification from a student. As you can imagine, with international travel and referral courses, a dive centre can have a lot of students from a lot of different countries coming in and out of their doors, and if any of them decide to do the course and then, you know, fail to pay, the dive centre is under no obligation to actually process your certification, even if you did all of the skills perfectly. Make sure that you pay your bills, otherwise you may never actually see that cert card. If you hide medical conditions, when you sign up for a scuba course, you'll have a whole bunch of paperwork just placed in front of you to sign everything off. And it's very important that you are completely honest on there. Just because you do have a medical condition that's listed on there, it doesn't necessarily mean that you cannot learn to dive. It usually just means that you need a doctor to sign you off. But it's very important that your instructor knows that so that they can adapt their dive plan accordingly. If you over-customize your equipment, scuba gear is usually designed and of course built to work correctly straight out of the box with very little adjustments. If you, you know, modify your gear too much, you may not be able to complete certain skills. I mean, like physically be able to do anything. So if you're planning on, you know, adapting any of your equipment that you've just purchased, you know, run it past your instructor first. They'll be able to guide you in the right direction and whether or not that adaptation is you know, a, a good idea or not. If you simply just don't turn up on time, uh, the entire day is scheduled very, very fervently and some things you know, just can't wait for little old you, I'm afraid. Weather, the tides, boats, uh, just some things cannot wait. And if you're late, then you will be left behind. So the morning of, allow for traffic, uh, you know, making your morning coffee and all that, uh, loading up and unloading all of your equipment so that you allow yourself plenty of time to arrive before the boat leaves and that way you won't be left behind. If you cut corners on skills, instructors go through believe me, a lot of training to look for very specific skills completed in a very specific order and way. If you complete a skill in a kind of weird way, we're just gonna ask you to do it again, I'm afraid. Um, so we're gonna ask you to do it again like we taught you. If you continue to skip something out, we can't sign you off on that skill. So you're just gonna have to try again on another dive. Once you qualify, you can then start getting creative with your skills, but for now, try and stick to you know how you were taught. If you rush too much, remember that scuba diving 
is a chilled out sport. And whilst we are practicing a few, you know, worst case scenarios in your open water dives, remember, we're only practicing. So prepare yourself. And then when you're ready, then complete the skill. You don't have to go on half a lung full of breath because my instructors just told me to perform this skill and you know, get yourself out of breath because you're rushing. Take your time and do it properly the first time. It will be far easier. And that way we're not gonna you know, ask you to do it again and now you're even more out of breath. So if someone asks you to perform a skill, <sighs> ground yourself, get yourself ready, go through it quickly in your mind and then do that skill. Not equalizing your ears early or often. If you can't get too far underwater because your ears hurt, then of course you can't complete the course. Certain skills have to be done below a certain depth. The important thing to remember about equalizing your ears is that it has nothing to do with how hard you equalize. If you forget to equalize when you start to go down, you can actually reach a depth where the pressure around you can prevent you from equalizing. So it doesn't matter how hard you equalize, that there's no way you can. So make sure that you start equalizing your ears as soon as your head goes under the water and then keep continuing to equalize all the way down and you'll be fine. Failing to actually, you know, dive. This is a kind of complicated one and I have had students like this where they can complete all the required skills for each dive perfectly, but the, the bit in the middle, the fundamental, you know, just swimming around and moving through the water part, they struggle with. You need to be able to move yourself through the water for us to actually sign you off. It's not just about the skills. If you struggle, talk to your instructor for some finning techniques and practice so that they can help you out and they can help you make sure that you do get signed off. But I have had divers who literally pull themselves along lines without using their legs. We, we actually need to see you, you know, swim through the water. And there were 10 ways to fail your open water course. It's, it's mostly about keeping you cool, uh, paying attention to everything that's going on and just talking to your instructor. When it comes to your skills, your instructor will usually just make you repeat a skill uh, until you get it right. But don't worry yourself about anything and make sure that you enjoy yourself. These are enjoyable dives. You're doing this all for fun and it's gonna open up so many new adventures for you. And if you want to learn about the best places around the world to go scuba diving or the latest scuba diving equipment, then of course stick around and subscribe to the Scuba Diver Magazine channel. Thank you for watching everybody and of course, good luck on your open water dives and safe diving.